What was your favorite toy as a child? If Legos made your list, then this week's close-up is just for you. Nathan Sawaya is an award-winning artist who creates awe-inspiring, larger-than-life works of art out of Lego bricks. The former corporate lawyer has been creating these beautiful and whimsical sculptures since 2002. He uses only standard Lego bricks and endless imagination. Nathan is now the author of two best-selling books and his touring exhibition, The Art of the Brick, has broken attendance records around the globe. He believes art is not optional. We caught up with him in Los Angeles where he showed us how that inspires everything that he does. People go to a, a museum and they, they may see a marble statue, and they can appreciate that marble statue for what it is. But when they come home at night, very doubtful they're gonna have a slab of marble they can chip away at. But people have Lego bricks at home, so when they go and they see my work created out of Lego, often they write to me and say, we came home, we got all our Lego bricks out, and we started creating as a family, and that's pretty cool. Um, so I had Lego bricks growing up as a kid. But, um, uh, you know, I, I grew up, I went on to other things, I suppose. So I ended up practicing corporate law in New York City. And I would come home after these long days at the law firm, and I would need some sort of outlet. I would come home and I would paint, or I would draw, or I would sculpt. And I would sculpt out of traditional things like clay or wire. One day I thought, what about this toy from my childhood? Could I create large-scale sculptures using just Lego bricks? So I dug out all these old Lego bricks from when I was a kid and just started experimenting. And then I started putting photos of my work up on a, a website. And it was um, not long after that I started getting commissions from folks, people requesting, oh, can you build me this, can you build me that? So it was really interesting because here I was working these full days in the law firm, and then I would come home at night and take on these commissions for folks all over the world where I was just creating their passion out of Lego. And eventually, it was actually when my website crashed from too many hits, I realized, you know what, it's time to, it's time to make a change. So I left the law firm behind and uh, became a full-time artist. It was a big risk and it was kind of start and stop. But during those breaks where I wasn't working on commissions, I was creating art for myself. So I'd create something for someone that helped pay the bills and then I'd create something for myself. And eventually I created a little collection of, of work. My big break came when I was able to do an exhibition of, of those pieces in my first solo show. That was the first time I really realized the power of this artwork. That museum does 25,000 people annually. So over the course of one year, they, they were happy to get 25,000 people. When we did this show, it was a six week show and we got 35,000 people. I love using the rectangular bricks because for me there's a bit of magic there. When you, when you see my art up close, you see all these right angles, all these very distinct lines. And then you back away from it and all those sharp corners kind of blend into curves. And that's where it really becomes, you know, magical. I think one of the most important reasons that I use Lego is to make the art accessible. Because my job as an artist is to inspire. I want to inspire other folks, and the best way to do that is to allow them to connect with the art as fast and easy as possible. So using Lego is a way that immediately inspires young kids to go and create, and that's cool. A lot of my human forms, I like to put them in, in transition. They're going through a bit of a metamorphosis. So a figure like yellow, where this figure is tearing its chest open and thousands of yellow Lego bricks are spilling out, he is going through a bit of a, a metamorphosis. 
they see it as giving their all, you know, like give everything you've got till your soul is spilling out or open yourself up to the world. I, I think part of that just is from my own personal transitions in life. You know, my, where I came from and how I've changed over the years, that, that emotion from those moments I put into the sculpture and that's what you're seeing there. It's definitely a, a transition from lawyer to artist. And, um, you know, you go from a job that's very secure, where it's a secure salary and, and whatnot, to, you know, a very specific type of lifestyle as a corporate lawyer, to this more bohemian lifestyle where you don't know if you're going to be able to pay rent. You don't know what, what the future holds. So it was definitely a transition. And during that transition, you really learn a lot about yourself and about the people around you because I had people who really questioned my decision, you know, that I was leaving this secure job to go create art out of a child's toy seemed crazy to some people, and they really told me I was making a huge mistake. I often advise people if they're trying to make a big transition in life, you have to cut that negativity out if you really want to follow your dreams. And that can be hard, because it might be a friend of yours who's telling you not to do it, and you got to really find out, well, who are, your, who are your friends if they're so negative about it? What's next for me? I don't know. I, I'm going to keep building. We're in my art studio here in Los Angeles, and I have over four and a half million bricks. So I'll probably keep working with Lego for a little while. <laughs>